So I would like to give a little bit of a context of what is it that we are doing here and why. Um, also, I would like to remind you that um, none of the things that I'm going to say are mine, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, and these are uh, information that I found from, let's say, higher teachings, conscious teachings, spiritual traditions. I often will um, report on their uh, origin, although this would take too much time. Um, so I'm just sharing with you things that uh, I have verified to be true. So I'm not just saying books, stuff, spiritual stuff, but yeah, they are books, spiritual stuff, but I have verified them. Um, and don't believe me. So don't believe me. Try to be open and to check for yourself. Yeah, it's not church. Don't need devotion. You already have a lot of beliefs, basically a lot of sufferings that we believe a bunch of stuff about ourselves that are not true having some more nice beliefs or uh, it doesn't work. So just try to open and verify, feel free to challenge what is being said here uh, and to ask questions. Um, all right, so the idea is that um, humanity as it is, and when we become 20 or 22 or 24 or 18, that we become adults and, you know, uh, basically nature or God doesn't bring us to completion as a human being for some mysterious reason like with uh, elephants and deer and uh, crocodiles and sharks and kittens uh, it seems like uh, nature brings all these species to full potential when like there's a cat it's my cat is the ultimate cat it can be but humans Somehow they are brought to some level of development of the body and of some basic functioning. And we think that we have attained now. We are uh, mature and adult and we have reached our maximum potential. But uh, the teachings say that that is not true from the point of view of potential of consciousness for human beings. We are like, uh, it's almost like an acorn as compared to an oak tree. Um, and the teachings, they say that um, basically humanity as it is and us as we are uh, becoming adults and we basically we are asleep. Plato speaks about it. Many spiritual traditions speak about it. They speak about this, uh, um, I mean, Buddhism, the whole thing. Buddha is the awakened one. Jesus talked about do not sleep and watchfulness. And anyway, I'm not going to go into who is saying that, but all spiritual traditions have this idea that left as we are, we are asleep. And this process of awakening or developing our full potential is optional. <laughs> it's optional. And uh, uh, we need to, to do something about it. Uh, it doesn't does happen. You know, like the, 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 the cheetah, it's just, it's like two years old. It's like the ultimate cheetah, but we are not like that. So um, that's the bad news. Uh, however, it is important to verify this because otherwise we, um, there's no incentive, you know. So These teachings, they say that actually there are four different states of consciousness that are available for humanity that we all experience. And we live just a regular person without doing a special inner work. We live just in two states. The first state is when we sleep in the night, like, you know, we sleep in the night uh, where we, you know, the mind is disconnected and we don't know what's happening unless there's strong stimulus and we just jolt yeah so we sleep in the night we have dreams and all of that that's one state and then we wake up in the morning and then this is the waking state uh that yeah so the teachings they say that well okay but this is there are two more states available to to men but they are acquired uh through effort uh actually and as compared to those states that are available, uh, states of being or level of awakeness, 
the waking state that everybody's in that we are in now that is like sleep it's it's we are asleep uh you know uh yeah so what characterizes this uh so this this state in which we are now uh and everybody is and like the politicians and the scientists and the poets and your parents and your kids and everybody um this called like the second state um we it's it's um It's a very tricky one because it feels like we are much more awake than when we are asleep in the night. Yeah. But as compared to what is possible, we are really um, like a zombie. It's a bit like a zombie state. So, okay, I will describe a little bit this state of sleep so it makes more sense because what we are doing here is we want to change that. We want to change this, this state um, because in sleep, in this state of sleep, we cannot be happy. Also, why do this? Basically, in sleep, we are tortured. We are unhappy. We are having unhappy relationships, unfulfilled. We have problems, recurring shit, dissatisfaction, uh, confusion, doubt. Uh, we are unhappy, basically. Yes. So the purpose of this um, work is uh, happiness. But not happiness, you know, there's a little misunderstanding about happiness, like, yeah, like, yeah, like it's like a state of a temporary state because something good happened. Uh, these teachings, they explain that actually happiness or inner peace or well-being is our true nature is. Um, but this is more like connected to having uh, awakened certain capacity in us and changing a certain state of sleep. Okay, so let me be more specific. Um, okay, so what happens in sleep? Uh, and some of these manifestations that happen in sleep, they are considered to be obstacles to self-consciousness or obstacles to awakening or healing. Let's add healing into the mix. Because I look at this work as some type of awakening with healing mixed in together. Um, becoming more conscious, becoming more conscious and then some healing. Yeah. But what are some of the characteristics of sleep, which ultimately are obstacles to being healing and uh, waking up and ultimately which are areas of work for us, these obstacles. One of them is daydreaming. It's the state of being checked out all the time. In this state, which is the default state for everybody, uh, where even here, basically, the, the mind goes somewhere else and there's long times of being somewhere else with the commentary with, with, so either ongoing commentary for what's happening or there's a commentary about ourselves or rehashing the past or going into the future. So this constant, this constant stream of thoughts that are usually not happy thoughts about next vacations. They are thoughts of worry, of stress, of fears, of uh, trying to control and plan. So this state of daydreaming is which they don't even talk in psychology or in uh, is normal. Like everyday psychology is normal because everyday psychology is psychology in sleep, you know, which helps to some degree that you have your sleep slightly more comfortable, but it's still not waking up. So major obstacle here is this daydreaming where basically we have these endless thoughts and we identify with each thought that comes along. Yeah. And these thoughts are connected to, they, they happen by themselves automatically. We have this illusion. We have this illusion that there is me thinking. There's me deciding as a thinker, but actually these thoughts are happening by themselves automatically based on certain programs basically which which we have no control over 
Um, so that's one characteristic of being unconscious, of being lost in thought all the time, driving, pooping, brushing your teeth. If you are honest with yourself and if you are informed now, you will see, you will be horrified. Actually, if you try to, to look at this, you will be like, oh, fuck, man. I was like thinking about this all the time, somewhere else all the time. So being horrified is a good step. Realize like how checked out we are. Yeah. So this is a, 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 an, an, an awakened being or a more conscious being doesn't have that like that. Basically, the thoughts are much less. They are much less thoughts. <laughs> the thoughts are not nasty. The thoughts are not attacking you or attacking other people or judging or doing all these things all the time. The thoughts are, instead of being like a vicious dog, <sighs> biting the master and biting everybody, that's the mind when we are asleep. A more in a more conscious, let's say, healed state. The mind is more like a good dog <laughs> that is uh, more quiet and is not biting the master, is not biting people. It is useful. So, and it's often quiet and is active only when needed. Yeah. Okay. Another. Uh, obstacle that I want to talk about is which is a state of sleep which is being identified basic identified identification this is hard to explain because we are in it all the time <laughs> so it, it, it makes more sense when we have some times we're being not identified we, we have some sense what this is but this identification is that You know, in the guided meditation we had, I was having us watch thought. Basically, you, you probably had to deal with daydreaming and identification all the time in our meditation. Yeah, there will be thought, they want to take you out. Another thought, baits, thinking about this, then you catch it, you come back. Then you have certain bodily energies, like, oh, I don't like it, like uh, resisting it. So identification is that the state where we believe and feel as if we are our thoughts. We are believing that we are our thoughts. We are the mind and the thoughts come and talk to talk. They say things and I feel like it's me. <laughs> and also the feeling comes and I feel this sadness or I feel anger or I feel longing or and sense of unworthiness, which for one angle, it's a, some sensation with some thoughts and memories. We are becoming it. This is all that I am. This fear, this, this, I'm not good enough. This, so we are our consciousness or that which is aware somehow is uh, dormant, somehow is weak and is constantly sucked into the thought or the feeling or the pattern, you know, pattern of I have to hide, I have to be nice. I would like to tell this guy, just back off, motherfucker, but it's like, hi. I'm, you know, then we, we identify these patterns, yeah? So basically, our awareness is identified and sucked with every thought, every feeling, every pattern, and, and we don't even know it. So that's a problem. Um... I mean, there are six obstacles. I don't want to go in all of them at this point. Another one is about this. Um, I think I would just stay with this daydreaming and identification. So basically there's not enough light. We are not aware of what's happening. And so the programs from childhood and programs of our imprints um they are running the show and there's no master you know that's like jesus would say that hey watch you wait you know it was esoteric like there's no master there's no master in the ship so this work of mindfulness and presence and um this type of thing it start to have more light into the system more turn it on the light 
to observe what's happening, to change what's happening. Okay. Can you just mention? Yeah, I can mention what are those obstacles, but briefly, because I want to move it along. Um, the other obstacles to a higher state of consciousness or awakening or healing, and which are characteristics of the second state. This is what's, that's why the world is like this, guys. That's why the, 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 the like everybody, the wealth is 1% population and everybody there is struggling and the children are starving and there's wars and forever. <laughs> why? Because humanity is asleep. Don't believe me. We are asleep. And in order to do something about it, we need to realize that. <laughs> um, like in Matrix, you know, Matrix, he was in the jar and there's nothing you can do if you are in the jar believing that you are a successful executive in Melbourne, but I'm in the jar. So first I need to realize I'm not actually a success executive and I'm in the jar and I need to get out of the jar and it's going to be a little uncomfortable uh, and then get to adapt to kind of walk. And... All right, the other obstacles are um, it was called inner considering. We are going to touch on this a lot. Inner considering is a particular form of identification where we are identified with our with um, how other people perceive us. So in sleep, we are not aware of what we are, meaning that, hey, I am divine aware fucking spirit here, man. <laughs> I'm aware being. No. In sleep, we are like, uh, we develop this imaginary picture of ourselves. Like we imagine that we are in a certain way and we try to be seen in a good light. We try to be liked, get approval, get love, get recognition, get to be seen or avoid being judged or uh, avoid people being upset with us, having people like us. All of this dynamism of, of trying to be in a certain way so that others like me, basically being very concerned how other people perceive me and doing something to appear in a certain way or doing something or not doing something to... So all of this dance, that's um, slavery, it's very stressful. We are totally inauthentic. Actually, we can get cancer and sick with this, but it's definitely um, unhappy. So this inner considering connected to... Uh, creating and maintaining this imaginary picture of me, which is very sensitive. And I have to uphold it and make sure that they like this and try that, you know? So this is um, for people who are into KI, you know, all of this, our wounding and um, patterns, they are patterns of inauthenticity. So, which, so this inner considering is driving the bus basically all the time. And through doing uh, this repression work, people in KI and all of this work that we are going to prepare here, you are freeing yourself from this. You know? Another obstacle is, it's about how we are with emotions, basically. Um, and the, either we are basic our, yeah, basically this is a big stuff, how we are with emotions. And there are two ways we are with emotions in sleep, which are problematic. One way is that as soon as I have an emotion, I become it. I am it. And I am like, it takes over me and then I am expressing it. And I'm like, you know, believing that I am feeling like this because of you. And then you are responsible for how I feel. So now I have these negative emotions that are, uh, I'm kind of blasting them on other people. So I'm identified in a highly reactive state where again, I lose myself completely in one emotion that feels like it's me. Yeah, so, uh, so then basically 
we are the effect of triggers all the time and the triggers are connected to traumas in the past yeah the second problem with emotions is that we have them uh with three another problem is that we have emotions they come but we we don't we we don't like it we are uncomfortable with emotions and we suppress them like we have subconscious programs we are going to discover that say i don't want to feel this i don't like this i don't want to feel this so we are we are escaping and distracting and suppressing emotions using uh focusing on something else just checking out in the mind looking at tv uh, substances uh, compulsions where we are suppressing our emotional body uh, because we subconsciously we are afraid to feel our parents had this we inherited this from them and this helped us when we were a kid to deal with shit to shut down yeah so this suppression of emotions that's another uh, problem and the re then there's another problem you know like i told the one that we are like reactive and just jumping on people and yeah there's another one that we learn early on to not even have this so there's an emotional repression uh, some of us have some type of emotional stuff that we learn early on that's that we learn to suppress before it even comes so it's like push down so we don't even feel it basically some of us we have some emotions completely offline however that's not possible they have to go somewhere so they get they 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 get into like become contractions uh, energies stuck in the body and they become something that feels like as if you have a diagnosis a chronic pain various things but they are a lifetime of frozen emotions yeah so some obstacle is our wrong attitude wrong relationship with emotions either that they are pushed down or they are offline or we are totally fucked by them <laughs> so that's a problem Another obstacle is uh, lying, lying. Uh, but here, lying to other people is the least of the problems, basically. Uh, but this mechanism of lying, uh, lying to other people. But, you know, this is not, hey, don't lie. Because sometimes when you're dealing with unjust, unhealthy, oppressive systems, it's good to lie <laughs> yeah so it's not it's not just don't lie you know it's a, some kind of uh talking about things that we don't know as if we know that's a big obstacle um uh and also lying to ourselves this is a big thing it's hard to see uh so i won't go into it but and there was a zen master saying hey lying to others it's 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 not good but it's okay but lying to yourself there's no more medicine you know so lying to ourselves hiding from ourselves bullshitting ourselves tricking ourselves all of this another one is uh, uh about um unnecessary talk it's our relationship with talking and for most people we just talk for the sake of talking and even if we're alone we talk and there's all this this chatter in our mind and the daydreaming it plays out all the time and so for most people the, the more you know this this like talking just talking for the sake of talking and this this just wastes energy and then we cannot really do the work of being more present if we're gossiping judging uh, talking like this talking about myself all the time me 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 uh yeah so so i want to switch gears here um So the shit we are in, it's not a mistake. So I don't know if God arranged it like that or the creator. So we don't know. But the situation is twofold, basically. We 
somehow we, we are unconscious, even as we are adults, we are unconscious, raised by unconscious people, yeah. unconscious from the point of view of uh, what's possible, yeah, from the level of development. And so because we are unconscious and raised by unconscious people in unconscious humanity, we are programmed with certain programs of which are connected to being asleep and in a sense of separation. Yeah, oh, I forgot to say another illusion or quality of the state of being asleep, which is very essential, is that we believe and we feel and we act as if we are autonomous, separate entities. We believe ourselves to be like a separate Mihai, separate from everybody else, separate from the world, separate from the earth, separate from God. And uh, the thinking we have, the ego thinking, is in separation, and we feel in separation, and we act in separation. Yeah, so, uh, and that is suffering. <laughs> so due to the fact that we raised like that, I know it's pessimistic, but we are going to do something about it. It's important to, to realize <laughs> that what's the situation, you know? Um, because of these factors of global low level of unconsciousness and of being wounded, traumatized, we adapt it to the society. So what happens is that our true self, our true nature, our presence is kind of dormant. Mm -hmm. It's like our superpower, our real self is dormant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then We all get here, we come with some essence, it's called essence, which is like our natural, innate, authentic self. Certain tendencies, certain strengths and qualities. You can see babies, they are different. Before they have been conditioned, before they've been wounded, they are different. And they all have a certain flavor, a certain quality that if we were not fuck with them, <laughs> they will develop a certain interest and, and they will become something, you know? So the essence is what we are born with. Because of this, our essence becomes stifled and ignored because our society, uh, the, the education is training, not our essence, except let's say Waldorf, Waldorf or Montessori schools, they are training, they are educating the essence to grow, yeah? and. However, the usual education is just educating the mind. So the essence, it doesn't grow. Our true authentic nature is starving and we develop this ego, false personality. Yeah, we, so from age six or so, we start to have more and more, even from age four, start to develop more and more false sense of personality. And this grows more and more and more and more. So by the time we are a um, teenager, we are all in personality, in this false personality, false self. This is operational. My my uh, authentic nature is passive in a corner there, you know? So that creates a lot of unhappiness. So part of our work here is to become more aware, more awake, and start to observe and study certain things, try to interrupt certain unconscious processes, and for the process of getting more conscious and awake and processing, what will happen is that our personality will diminish, will become weaker. The false aspect of us gets weaker and less in charge. And the true aspect, our authentic nature becomes back on charge. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to do. This is an important, this is a part of the healing and all of that. We can go deeper into this kind of uh, enlightenment or waking up to our true nature and all of that. I'm not going to go into it now.
So we are going to engage in this group in two types of work. Uh, and I use here, for those of you who are familiar with KI, um, Killaby inquiries, somehow the idea is that it's almost like three types of type of work necessary in order to complete this process of becoming more conscious and cleaning up and growing up. And, you know, there's like three types of work necessary. And I'm going to engage in just two of them in this group. Uh, the first is called like first dimension and second dimension of practice. First dimension is anything to do with becoming more aware, more conscious, like developing a witnessing practice, developing a witnessing meditation, learning how to become more aware, learning how to do this mining, you know, unpack what's happening in the body a little bit, become aware that the thoughts and the feelings are connected and they are hidden thoughts in the this bodily sensation. And so this work of becoming more conscious, jump-starting what we are, this presence and witnessing. So we are going to do a lot of stuff like that. This is the first dimension. We are more aware of what's here. That is good, that is foundational, but is not enough somehow because they are uh, all kinds of things that create a lot of suffering which are hidden. It's almost like they are not here. Hey, I'm here, I'm okay, it's good. Yeah, but then somebody will say something or get triggered or at 6 p.m. in the evening you feel some weird sense of lack or something or you react or you know anxiety, depression. So we have some things that are hidden under the ocean, which if we just meditate or practice presence in everyday life, that is not enough. So the second dimension is starting to do some light processing, starting to process our pain body, identify what programs we developed in connection to mommy and daddy or grandma or stepmother or family identify, be, become aware of our deficiency stories, our limiting programs. We become aware of our uh, patterns, how we adapted, you know, to be funny, to hide, to, to excel, to can't tell, put boundaries. Anyway, all of these patterns we developed. So, so we need, so this is the second dimension of practice connected to processing a little bit, processing. Um, and also learning how to not resist our emotions anymore. So we learn how to not resist our emotions and how to deal with our emotions in a way that we are not shooting them on people, but also we are not repressing them, suppressing them. So we are feeling them fully, which is a hard an art and in science. So that's what I'm going to engage in this module first and second dimension work uh first dimension is about presence and witnessing second dimension is about processing and diminishing our pain body there is a third dimension which i won't get to it but i will prepare towards it is dimension where we have our uh, deepest worst nastiest pain body that's most unpleasant that we try to avoid the most. It's the roots, the origin of the shit, which is connected to trauma, trauma and repression. Uh, there is a third dimensional practice that you can go. I can do it with you, but not in this module where you can go in all those and uh, get to the bottom of it. However, you can't go for most people straight there. Uh, so you need to have some kind of because it's going to be, you are going to bounce up. Your system is going to be like, no, 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 no. Uh, access denied. And it's going to oh, fuck me up. Oh, I don't like this. So so we need to get more conscious and get more our chops uh, and gain confidence to witness and feel some unpleasantness. And we witness, we have some success in seeing how things dissolve and some things diminish before we can go to the worst shark tank
I will tell you uh, at the end of this meeting uh, certain things that we can do practically, but um, I would like to open the floor to uh, any uh, questions you have or comments or challenges or anything about what I said so far.